everyone, and welcome to this, another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we took care of occluding objects. So if the walls were blocking your character, or anything was blocking your character, we set it up so those walls would fade out. Alright, in today's episode, I'd like to take a look at, at displaying pre-rendered video. Okay, let's get started. Okay guys, so let's take a look at a few things that I've changed here before we move forward. Um, if we take a look, I have just built this kind of little hallway with walls all the way around. Uh, I added in two cubes on either side just to fill in the space. Uh, that's all it does. And I took all my walls and all my floors and my cubes here on the side, and I built a brand new game object called Environment, and I added everything to that environment. That way, my hierarchy is staying nice and neat and clean. We don't get a lot of stuff that's kind of crowding out this area. If I hit play, everything is working like it was before. See? There we go. Our player is running along and the walls fade out. Multiple walls will fade out. Alright, if we end up in between the two, you'll get both of them fading out, and as you cross out of one, the other one will come back. Okay, so, today, what I'd like to take a look at is creating, or displaying pre-rendered video. And this is not a difficult process, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so, let's take a look. What I want to do, if you look inside of your models, let's take a look in your models, uh, and you've been given something called screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an eye video. Let me make sure I give you guys your eye video. Yes, it's right here. Eye video is there. And let's make sure we're going to delete any materials we have for the eye video so we can redo it right here. Bam, let's delete it. You guys won't actually have that anyway. Delete. I didn't give you any of the materials in the assets folder. So we'll redo that one there so you can see it as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, go into models. I want to drag and drop screen in place. Now, screen is kind of tiny. So we're going to make it uh, 4, and we're going to make it 4, and we're going to make it 2. So we get ourselves a nice big screen. Okay, and let's actually turn it around 180. 180. So there we go. Our screen is pretty straightforward. This is kind of like a display panel or something like that. That's how I looked at it. Uh, and basically what I want to do is I want to make this like a television set. Now, the technique I'm going to show you for displaying uh, pre-rendered video doesn't have to be like this. You don't have to make a TV out of it. You could use it to make a conveyor belt look like it's running. You could use it for a number of different things. Uh, for pretty much anything you can imagine. So uh, for now, we're just going to take a look at a simple television set. Now, the screen itself is perfectly fine. I'm not going to change anything with this. What I am going to do, let's take a look at the texture I gave you. I did give you guys, if I double click this, is it open? Yes, it does. I gave you guys this simple eye video, and uh, I just did it. I just did it to make it uh, to you know make some ambiance to this game. Uh, that's the only reason I built it, and it's kind of like the computer's watching you everywhere you go. I found some video online of eyes, and I I changed the colors, and I slowed it down, I sped it up, I did all this different stuff to it. Uh, so boom, that's what I've given you guys now. Create that's that's our pre-rendered video. So any kind of pre-rendered video that you want to show, you can show. I'm gonna, I gave you guys this eye, but obviously you can replace it with any kind of video you want. So for now, let's take a look. What I want to do is I want basically want to show uh, the video inside of the screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say game object. I'm going to create a brand new 3D object. I'm going to create a plane, and uh, let's call this um, let's call this let's call it TV screen. It doesn't matter what you call it, TV screen. And I'm going to grab TV screen. I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it on top of screen right there. So right now it is within the hierarchy, and it's obviously not in the right location. So let's zero that out first of all. Let's just reset this. Reset. Bang. So it's huge now. Uh, and we're obviously going to make it much smaller. Let's make it uh, 0.25. Still too big. Let's make it 0.15. Too small. Make it 0.8. That's not so bad. Uh, let's rotate it in the this direction so we are actually looking at it like a screen if you're have the wrong direction you won't be able to see it it kind of you can't see uh, behind planes or behind you can't see the reverse side of faces you can only see the direction that's supposed to be rendered so let's make it uh, 90 bang so it's like that obviously the Y has to be much smaller let's make it 0.18 as well whoa that's still too big 0.1 oh I'm changing the wrong one it should be the Z point one that looks pretty good that fits in there pretty good. All right, so that's going to be our screen right there. It doesn't quite fit, but you know who cares? This is supposed to be point eight eight five. There. All right, so that is our screen that we want to display everything on. Now the next thing we want to do is create a material that we're going to actually be able to put on top of the screen. Okay, so I'm going to go into my materials. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say create, and I'm going to create a brand new material. Bang, and we will call this thing here. Uh, 
I video material. I video material. Now it comes in as a standard shader, and that's perfectly fine. You can use a standard shader if you want to. What I like to do though, this is a television screen, I want to make it make sure it's bright all the time. It doesn't have to be lit. I want to make sure that it's bright regardless of whether or not there's there's light actually hitting it. So I'm going to change it from the standard shader into an unlit textured shader. Okay, and this allows me to put in a texture right here. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to go in, I'm going to find my texture of the eye video, I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it in place. Okay? That's all you have to do. That texture is now in place. Now I want to change my TV screen so it's utilizing that brand new material uh, under right under here under default material. Click and instead of using instead of using the uh, instead of using the default, I'm going to use this iVid. Now everything is going to turn black, and that's perfectly fine. If I hit play right now, nothing's going to happen. All right, the screen itself is not showing anything. Nothing's actually occurring. Okay, what we have to do now is we have to write a script to turn that video on or turn it off or do whatever you want to it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna write a script right now to make sure that this thing activates properly. Okay, so just say add component. Let's go all the way down to scripts and let's say brand new script and we're gonna call this one here. Let's call it play play video. It doesn't really matter what video it is. Let's just say play video. Bang! All right, it gets added. Let's double click and open it up. Did it open somewhere that I'm not seeing? There it is. Okay. Uh, just another screen image problem. Okay, let's go in here to our play video. Our play video is going to be fairly straightforward. If you have audio, if you have audio, you're going to want to do something here. Uh, I don't actually have audio that I want to use with this, but I'll add it in anyway for you guys. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually add something here called a required component. And this will make sure that you always have audio available if you actually want to play your audio. Okay, so I'm going to add a required component within the square brackets. I'm going to say type of, oops, type of, and I want to make sure I add in, in the round brackets, audio source. Audio source, all right? And this will, if you don't actually have one associated with your, with your asset, it'll automatically add the audio source for you. And that way you'll be able to go through and not worry about the fact that, oh, I forgot to add an audio source. This will automatically add it for you. And I normally add this if I've got video, just simply to make sure uh, that my, my audio for the video will play as well, okay? And the situation I've got here, I don't actually, oh, that's in the wrong spot. Sorry, this should not go here. Edit, cut this out, cut it, it should go right here. Edit, paste, boom, all right, there we go. That's better. <laughs> so, uh, this will just make sure that the audio source is associated with this, with this asset. Okay, now, what we wanna do is we're gonna add a number of different things in here. We're gonna add in a, uh, a serialized field. Uh, so, once again, it's gonna be available within the inspector. We can make changes to this, and we're gonna call this thing, we're gonna add in a movie inspector, or, sorry, a movie texture, excuse me, a movie texture. And this is going to allow us to, this is actually going to make our movie for us. So let's call this movie, bang. All right, so we have a movie texture called movie. And we want to have a reference to our renderer once again. So our renderer, we'll call it my render, renderer, renderer, renderer. All right, all right, and that's going to give us an, a reference to the renderer associated with this object as well. And if you actually have an audio source of some kind, you can actually, uh, you can actually reference it here as well. Uh, I don't actually have one, but again, you'd have you'd have uh, audio source uh, my AS, let's say. All right, and I'll just remove this for now because I don't actually want to use the audio with this video. Okay, so my audio source is, is commented out. Anyway, start off with what we want to do is we want to find in our start function we want to find our renderer. That's the first thing we want to do. And in this situation, this has gone on. Let me make sure I put it in the right location. This has gone into the location where we actually have our renderer. Our script is on the same one as our renderer. So let's go back here. And we'll say my renderer is equal to get component. We are looking for a renderer. 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 Bang, 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 and bang. All right. After that, we're going to take a look for a couple other things. Once we found that, you could, you could actually go through and do the same thing with your audio source. I don't have one. <laughs> But anyway, what we want to do is we've already we already have access to our movie right here. It's a serialized field. We've already we've already put it in place. In our case, we're gonna dump in the i video. But what I basically want to do is make sure that the movie, in my case, I want the movie to be stopped. So if it's playing, I want it to stop. OK? 
okay that's how I want to start it off and what I want to do is make sure that so whatever movie is there it's stopped I want to then set up my renderer my renderer dot material material dot main texture and I want to set that equal to my movie okay that's gonna set the main texture of whatever material you've got there to this movie okay that's that's the first thing we want to do and afterwards I want to start my movie playing movie dot play okay so basically with this just in place just this in place if I file save this file save and I head back on over to here and I hit play as long as everything is good here I have no movie let's make sure first of all that I've got my texture and I got my eye video in there so it's playing the correct movie and I hit play the eye video will automatically start playing okay and it will it will hit to get to a point it'll stop so if the movie is only five seconds long the movie itself will stop and you'll have to have some way of restarting it so it's going to be up to you to do so uh, what I basically want to do now that I've got this screen in place let's, that works perfectly well and you can see now that once the movie's been played once the actual video looks like it should look all right uh, let's say that I like let's say I like the location of this I don't think my players in front of it to start off with no it's not let's say I like the location of this let's say what I want to do with this what what I actually did with a, my my game is I set it up so every time the player walked by the video restarted so it kind of like just blinked on and blinked off the video restarted kind of like it saw the player for the first time so let's take a look at how to do that so every time the player walks by this I want this thing to blink on and off really easy TV screen all right, that's where everything's taking place right now. I'm going to add component, and I'm going to add a brand new physics box collider. And once again, it's going to be really teeny tiny because this thing is actually associated with a flat plane. Now, obviously, I want it to be much larger than that. Uh, we can go through and we can make some changes to it. So let's make the size of it. Uh, let's make the size of it. Sorry, down here, 10 is fine. Let's make it 100. Oh, that's too big. Let's just make it 50. 50 for now. All right, and let's move it out 25. All right, so right now we've got ourselves a, a collider associated with this screen. I want to make sure it's a trigger. If it's a trigger, then anything that's going through it has the opportunity to trigger events that occur within the actual script. And I've already got a script on here. I've got my script, play video. All right, so let's go back to our play video script. Bang. And we're going to make some updates to this actual play video script. We want to make sure that if the player crosses by, we turn this video on and off. So let's get, we don't need this update. We can get rid of it. If you wanted to, you could continuously check within the update if the video itself is stopped or if it's done. And if it's stopped, then start playing it again. I'm not going to bother because I'm basically going to turn this video on and off whenever the character walks through. So void on trigger, trigger, enter. It takes a one. Uh, one a variable collider and we'll just call it other like we always do bang bang and bang all right so uh, whenever I first thing I want to check whenever something enters this is whether or not it's my player if I go back here and we take a look at our player uh, our player and we take a look at the player it's currently tagged as player I told you guys to do that right at the beginning make sure you tag your player as player that's gonna come in handy right now so let's bring this back in here first thing we're gonna check is if other dot tag equals equals quotations player if it does we want something to happen if it doesn't we don't really care what do I want to happen I want my movie to stop okay I want to make sure once again you don't probably don't have to do this because you've already set it once in the start function but let's just make sure that our movie is set to the right one if you wanted to you could put out a different movie or something like that so I'm just gonna grab this actually I'm gonna grab all, th all th both of these down here I'm just gonna reset it so it's it's setting my my thing once again paste I'm just resetting my main texture to movie again and I'm hitting play once again okay that's all it takes that's all it takes I'm gonna file save this and I'm going to hit play. Let me see. Play. All right. So there we go. We can see my video is already operational. I'm walking back and forth. If I walk into this, you saw how it clicked off and started again. Watch what happens when I walk in. Clicks off, starts again. So whenever my character walks through, the video restarts. And I set it up so that their video starts on a blink. And it kind of looks like it is reacting to the player entering its field of view. All right, guys. That's it. 
That's how easy it is to play pre-rendered video. You could put any video you want in there. You could put any video and audio you want in there. You could have it so it's a conveyor belt or a tank trap or a television screen or, or anything that you want to show. Anytime you have pre-rendered video, you can put it on the screen just like that. Now, that's it. That's all I want to show this time, I think. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, you should be able to go through now and take some of the stuff I've given you. So I've given you a bunch of different models in here. You've got yourself your first screen. You should be able to take one of these other things, like your cube, for example, drop it in place. The cube is at 0.025, I think. 0.025 and 0.025, is that right? Let's zero this out, just so we can see it. So you should be able to go in there and start adding objects. I've given you guys a bunch of different objects. Well, I don't know about a bunch. I've given you doors. I've given you walls. I've given you these boxes. Uh, these boxes can be really, really easy. And if you want later on, we're going to end up making some things that explode. Uh, so the boxes can be added. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Let's just add our box right there. Really, really quickly, if you want to add this box, go into the cube. Cube 1, say add, and we're going to add a, a quickly add our physics box collider, which will give you the right size box. It's kind of big. You can make it smaller if you want. I'm going to add to our box a rigid body, add component, rigid body. That's our physics and our rigid body. And that way, this object will automatically, uh, you know, when we have explosions and that kind of thing, we'll be able to have this thing, have this thing uh, fly off in some direction. All right. So right now, we've got a box now. We can kind of interact with it right now because we have a rigid body as well. Okay, so you can start putting in your screens, you can start putting in your boxes, make different sizes. Both of these, uh, both of these objects right now, you want to go into your prefabs, you want to grab your cube box, you want to drag it and drop it in place here, and you want to grab your screen, and you want to drag it and drop it in place, so you can add these things a bunch of times to your actual game. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope your games are coming along really, really good. If you've got something, I'd love to see it. I, I never mind hearing from you guys. I love comments. I love hearing what you guys have to say. I love to see the progress you make. All right? I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. A thumbs down is perfectly fine. Let me know what you didn't like, and I'll try and fix it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.